and gentlemen, I have a sneaky suspicion that I'm not the only one in the sacred sanctuary who has arrived to this place in your life. I've decided. I've decided. Now, I taught us this before, but repetition is the mother of learning. Decide is comprised of two words, the prefix D and side. D means to remove, which is how we have things like dehumidify, decompress, decline, and side, C-I-D-E, means to kill off, which is how we have words like pesticide or homicide or genocide. So when you decide, you are removing and killing off all other options. Because I have become a decided man. I have become a decided woman. And I'm praying and believing that we have some decided people in the house who have made up their mind. You're like, you know what? I've decided to be sold out. I've decided to not compromise. I've decided to stop cursing people out, but I'm going to pray for you. I've decided to stop being petty. I've decided to keep my legs closed until marriage. I've decided to stop getting high. I've decided to stop getting faded. I've decided to stop getting tipsy. Not because of legalism, but because I'm protecting my time. Somebody say, I've decided. I've decided to be all in. I've decided to trust God with his timing. I've decided to be a man or a woman who has surrendered my life to the gospel. I have decided to heal. I can't wait till Therapy Thursday starts back up in a few weeks. There's so much beating on my heart. I've decided to heal because watch this. Unaddressed pain, unaddressed pain or pain that has not been dealt with keeps our evolution and our spiritual growth stuck in transit. One more time. Unaddressed pain. This is the pain that you keep saying, I'm cool. I'm good. I ain't tripping over that. I'm straight that. Unaddressed pain keeps our evolution and our spiritual growth in Christ stuck in transit. That's where I want to park for this sermonic presentation. That's where I wanna park for this preaching presentation as we are entering into part four of our timing series. I told my wife, cause I was studying, I said, I'm seeing something that I never saw before. Heartbreak many times is married to God's timing. Heartbreak and God's timing. God's timing and heartbreak. We're going to deal with that. We're going to deal with disappointment. We're going to deal with being let down. We're going to deal with heartbreak because there is nobody under the sound of my voice who has never experienced disappointment. Heartbreak and God's timing. And I said, okay, I, I, I think I see what the enemy's trying to do. If he can get for us to mismanage pain, that will lead us into mismanaging time because pain causes for us to pursue false remedies. Did y'all hear? I'm telling you. I said, Miss Flowers, you're going to have to help me towards the middle part of this message. We're going to have to double team this on today because there's some people who don't understand. Maybe God is trying to see, can I trust you with disappointment? Heartbreak. And God's timing, if the enemy can get us to mismanage pain, that will cause for us to mismanage our time because pain causes for us to pursue false remedies. You wouldn't entertain that man if your heart wasn't broken before him. You wouldn't even be entertaining that woman if you weren't trying to heal from a pain that you experienced. You're using her as medication. You're using him as medication because that's what unaddressed pain does. It makes you pursue false remedies. So, the enemy sends somebody to hurt you. But God will send somebody to assist you in your healing. Please notice I did not say God will send somebody to heal you. I said he will send somebody to assist you in your healing because you must be a participant in your own healing process. 
You must participate. You must be intentional to go to therapy. You must be intentional to come to community. You must be intentional to reach out to spiritual leaders to help you and say, hey, this is what my marriage is going through. This is what my mind is thinking. You must seek out the help as well. Like I told us many times, you don't catch health, you catch sickness. So just like the enemy will send somebody to hurt you, God will send people to assist you in your healing. But if you are still in love with what was, ooh, your neck. <laughs> if you are still in love with what was, this means every person God sends, you'll push away because they're not who you want. They're not who you want. Can we talk? Yes. Sometimes heartbreak is your heart screaming, I did not want this to be a lesson. I wanted this one to be love. Yeah. Didn't want for this to be a lesson. I'm tired of learning through pain. And your heart is aching. And God is going to encourage us today, sometimes that pain, I'm trying to see if I could trust you with it. I didn't want this to be a lesson. I wanted this to be love. I wanted, I wanted, I wanted, I wanted. Maybe that's it. Could it be what we want is a form of self-sabotage? God's like, okay, your appetite hasn't changed from Egypt yet. So everything that you want feels good to you, but it's really slavery. So I'm trying to teach you not to go off what you want, but to go off what you need. Right now, you need discipline. Right now, you need discipleship. Right now, you don't need to miss any church service. Every time the doors are open, you need to be here because I'm trying to deal with your foundation. We are dealing with a generation who wants platform, but they don't understand if you don't have the foundation. Everything that's built on a weak foundation will collapse in a storm. And God is saying, I need my people to understand what you do in time matters to me. Your birthday is me giving you a clock. And I'm trying to help you with your time. Could it be, could it be how we steward our current wounds affects how we see tomorrow. Ushers, y'all get ready. going to be a lot of tissue. Kleenex, I already see it. But this is prophetic. How we steward our current wounds affects how we see tomorrow. Which is why everybody knew who comes. Your mind, they're going to hurt me too. They're going to do the same thing. They're lying too. Some, somebody right now can't even hear the message. This pastor probably fake too. They probably do this. They probably... <laughs> Think about it. Unaddressed heartbreak causes for you to use yesterday's pain as today's perspective. So you can't even hear what I'm saying today because of what somebody else was saying yesterday. <laughs> heartbreak and God's timing. But hear me, church family, it's not until the pain of change outweighs the irritation of being stuck that you won't move one more time it's not until the pain of change remember i told us two weeks ago discipline is to lean into discomfort and visit there daily it is not until the pain of change it's gonna hurt but i don't want my flesh to be boss anymore i want to change it's gonna hurt i want to change i don't want my flesh to be boss I don't want to have to go down the alcoholic beverage aisle to try to find peace from a stressful day anymore. I want to change. I don't want to have to use my vibrator to go to sleep. I don't want to have to watch porn and masturbate to try to sleep. I don't want to have to have Hennessy to try to have fun. I don't want to drown myself in things that steal my time. I want to be able to have peace and peace that surpasses all of my understanding. That's what I want. And until the pain of change outweighs the irritation of being stuck, you'll never move. You'll never move. The reason why we're doing this word, I know, you probably came here thinking that you're going to hear some holiday season message. 
I want to preach from this thought. Tis the season. You probably thought you were going to hear something about that. <laughs> something like that. Some churches preach that, and that's cool. But that's not what God has put on my heart. What God has placed on my heart is okay. The quality of our heart and the condition of our soul and what we do with our time affects too many people for us to ignore when the limp remains. The quality of my heart and the condition of my soul and the choices I make with my time affects too many people for me to ignore when the limp remains. When it hurt me, when it broke me, when it wounded me. I know I'm about to be excited about 2024. I've already heard these church, churchy colloquialisms. 2024 is the year I'm going to get more. I'm like, <laughs> why y'all keep lying to people? Not if they don't surrender to Jesus. God's not waiting for the calendar to change for you to experience his blessing. He's like, we could do this on today. There's still enough time in 2023 for me to do exceedingly and abundantly more than you can ask if you just render to me your obedience. Obedience. When the limp remains, when it's still affecting my heart, when we're people, hear me, who do not know how to identify the yes, the no, or the not yet of God, disappointment is imminent. And when we have allowed disappointment to have the last word, doubt and paranoia will be your first words. Did y'all hear me? When you've allowed disappointment to constantly have the last word, doubt and paranoia will be the first words. Why? Because the body remembers. You could try all you want. I know with all your churchy statements, you could try with all you got to stuff events and disappointment and heartbreak in the luggage of your heart. You could stuff it in by saying, I'm cool, I'm straight, I'm all right, I'm over that. But all it takes is for one person to pull your trigger. All it takes is one more pandemic. All it takes is for one more unfulfilled expectation and the zipper of trying to hold it all together is going to break. And I want us to look at this text in the Gospel of John, chapter 11. I've been hearing this biblical story since I was a little boy. But this week, I saw something different and I want to share it with you. And hopefully, I can shift your perspective. That's really what my job is on today to shift your perspective. John chapter 11, verse 3, it says, So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. <laughs> Emphasis on you love. Because sometimes we think if God loves it, he'll do it. Okay. The one you love is sick. When he, speaking of Jesus, when he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it's for the glory of God so that God's son may be glorified through it. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. And then he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. Okay, pause. Okay, I, I just want, I don't want you to miss this. Verses 3 and 4 give us the biblical intelligence and the biblical enlightenment that Jesus heard about their situation. He heard about their issue. Let's make it sound churchy. Jesus heard their prayers. He heard their prayers. He heard their request. He received the news that Lazarus was sick. But verse 5 and verse 6 says something crazy. It says Jesus heard it and he loved Mary and Martha, so he stayed. <laughs> I love you, so I'm not going to get involved right now. I love you, so I'm not going to stop it. I love you. So I'm going to allow it to hurt you. 
I love you that much. And I'm like, this proposes three very important questions that I want us to consider for just a few moments. First question is, do you know how to steward pain that God allows and you won't leave him? Do you know how to steward pain that God allows and you won't leave him? Then number two, I think we need to ask ourselves, secondly, do you know how to steward pain and that pain don't cause for you to pursue time wasters? Girl, I just had a rough day. I need me some. (laughs) I just had a stressful day, bro, when y'all firing it up. Do you know how to experience disappointment and not pursue false remedies. And the most important question of all from this just few passages of scripture, can God trust you with heartbreak? I know that's a question that you probably never heard a preacher ask you. Because in Western Hemisphere Christianity, especially America, we have been over preaching the yes of God. We will shout about God giving us blessings and shout about breakthrough and shout about abundance and shout about harvest and shout about wonders and shout about miracles. But what about when God is trying to get you to exuberate this fruit of the spirit that I really haven't heard many sermons on? What about when God is trying to get you to produce the fruit of long suffering? Preach the fruit of patience. Amen. I need that. Preach the fruit of joy. I need that joy to the world. (laughs) What about, do you trust me when I'm trying to get you to produce long suffering? You're not going to like it. It's going to hurt. It's going to be uncomfortable. And we can't sit here and be like, you know what? I just don't agree with that. What type of question is that? Can God trust you with disappointment? And can God trust you with heartbreak? I don't agree with that, Pastor. Let me give you Bible to show you that's one of God's methodologies. It had to hurt Abraham's heart for God to give him a promised son and then tell him, go sacrifice your son, the son that you waited 25 plus years for. God was testing him. Can God trust you? And do you know? how to steward pain to where you won't leave them when it hurts. I'll give you more biblical characters. Jairus, when he went to Jesus saying, my daughter is sick, can you please come heal her? And Jesus is taking his precious time, turning around, talking about who touched me, for I perceive that power has gone out from me. Your 12-year-old daughter is sick, and Jairus hears what no parent ever wants to hear. The people from Jairus' house come to him and say, your daughter's dead. Why bother the teacher any further? Make it make sense. Why pray? That stuff don't work. Why come to church? That stuff don't work. Why fast? That stuff doesn't work. Why listen to those sermons? All they want is your money. That stuff doesn't work. Why disciple? Why submit yourself to discipleship? Why get accountability? Because to not have accountability is a spiritual liability. Why bother the teacher any further? You think it didn't hurt Jairus' heart in that moment? I can give you more biblical characters. What about the disciples when they saw Jesus getting beat up? Jesus getting spit on and flogged and we followed you for three years and left our businesses. We thought that you were going to overthrow Rome and give Jerusalem back to us. But now you're going to die? You don't think that pain and heartbreak hit the disciples' heart? for a few days. So God was saying, I need you to be able to steward this heartbreak because I have a timing when I'm going to do something different. Heartbreak, God's timing. Heartbreak, God's timing. I can give you more Bible. How do you think Mary, the mother of Jesus, felt? looking on the cross at her bloody mutilated son and Jesus has to push up just to breathe because crucifixion was made for suffocation and if you don't push up you will begin to suffocate which is why the Romans would break their knees so that they couldn't lift up where they would die faster and Jesus is on the cross looking at Mary and saying woman behold your son you don't think that hurt to see her son's intestines hanging out and him nailed to a cross can God trust you with pain and you won't leave them. And what about you go to Old Testament again? Joseph. You don't think it hurt Joseph's heart 
for his brothers to hate him so much so that they will take his robe from him, throw him in a pit, then take him out of a pit, then sell him into slavery. Then Potiphar's wife saw that he was fine. She took his clothes because he was running from her. Here we are once again, somebody taking Joseph's clothes. I guess they don't understand. The favor's not on my garment, fool. The favor's on my life. You don't think it hurt Joseph to see the very people who sold me into slavery, didn't know how I was going to survive, didn't know how I was going to live, and now I have to see them in another season, and now they need my help? Do you know how to steward pain? And can God trust you with heartbreak to where you won't leave him? Pain has formed many atheists. Pain has formed many agnostics. Because God did not do what they thought he should do, I no longer believe that he exists. And I'm not preaching to you from some height I've never been. I know what it was like to be on vacation with my family and get a call that my grandmother was found unconscious and get back to Houston and look through the hospital windows and see my grandmother on life support and I'm praying and believing that she's gonna live but then we got word later that she died. I know what that feels like when God hands you pain and that's not what you asked for. I know what it feels like to pray for my grandfather to be able to see me graduate high school and we get the call two days later that he died in the hospital. I know what it feels like to look at a building, believe by faith and trust God that that's going to be the building that we have and it got sold and somebody's using it for something stupid. <laughs> I'm like, God, we could have used that. I'm trying to get a larger facility so we can facilitate your people. Can I trust you with disappointment? Because I have a time when I'm going to do it. If not in this life, then the next. See, some of us, you can't handle next level because you can't handle current level pain. You're praying for God to bless whatever it is, your ministry, grow your platform, and God's like, critics in the basement are disturbing your peace. How are you going to handle the hate upstairs? You got to clap back to every comment. Somebody on 45, a stranger can cut you off, and you lose all your Christianity. I mean, you start swerving and looking all hard, making sure they see you. <laughs> Am I telling the truth? Can I trust you? with pain and you won't leave me. I want us to consider, what is your pain response? Some people try to smoke it out, drink it out, sex it out, club it out. Ooh, this is heavy. Could it be possible your last two marriages were a pain escape attempt? The person that you're dating with now, you know it's not God's will. It's just a false remedy so that you can escape the pain of loneliness. I didn't come to play today. <laughs> came to help. Somebody said, you don't play any day. <laughs> I heard you. Yeah. Could it be possible that our choices are pain-led, which is causing for us to waste time? If I can get them to mismanage pain, that will cause for them to mismanage time. Let's speak around that thought from this subject, heartbreak and God's timing. Heartbreak and God's timing. If I was a note taker, I'd write this down. What's the definition of heartbreak? Heartbreak is when our emotions have to readjust unwillingly. That's so good. Heartbreak is when your emotions have to readjust unwillingly. I don't want to adjust to not having them in my life. I don't want to adjust. See, this is why some people are still stuck. You won't turn the page because you know who won't be in the next chapter. 
So I'm going to stay right here. I'm going to tolerate the narcissism. I'm going to tolerate the abuse. I'm going to tolerate the pain. I'd rather be kept warm by a real devil than have real peace. I'm going to act like I'm happy. I'm going to act like I'm okay. I'm going to post on the gram like I'm at this false place that I'm really not because I know if I listen to God and turn the page, they won't be in the next chapter. So <laughs> I'd rather deal with a devil because heartbreak is when your emotions have to readjust unwillingly. I know, I know it hurts, I know. I know it hurts when you, when you are homesick from arms that if you let hold you will hold you back. You're homesick for that embrace. You want that hold again, but if they hold you again, they're gonna hold you again from your peace and hold you again from discernment and hold you again from clarity and hold you again from purpose but you're homesick from what was and God is saying can I trust you with a heartbreak because I have something better Amen. it's not it's not about he'll come when you want him he comes in the nick of time no he always had a time it's just I love you so much I'm not going to come when you ask me to. I'm not going to get involved right now. This heartbreak is for your recalibration. You are going down a route that will make you waste time. And I love you so much to hurt your heart, to recalibrate your feet, to get right back on the path because his word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And is it possible we've gotten so used to, used to walking in darkness that we're mislabeling it as night vision, but God is saying, no, that's not night vision, that's you wasting time. Can I trust you with heartbreak and disappointment? And you won't. Leave me. I know the memories are painful. Some, somehow, in some way, memories have a way of sneaking out our eyes and rolling down our cheeks. I, I, I know it hurts, but I have something better if you were to just trust me. And I'm like, why, why aren't we doing more preaching about suffering and pain? Why aren't we telling people sometimes... Doing what Jesus wants you to do hurts. It's going to hurt for you to end the relationship because you're installing standards. That hurts. It's going to hurt for me to have my family talk about me and I no longer can go over there for Christmas because they, they are an unhealthy atmosphere for me. And every time I try to go over there, my peace is vacuumed out. It hurts sometimes when God is telling you endure it and say nothing. Feel what it feels like to be my child. Because a wise man can overlook an offense. Overlook that. Stand above that. When they go low, just go higher. Have character. That, that, that's difficult. And if we don't talk about this, when we don't get the raise, we leave. When they leave us or when we get divorced, we leave. When life gets hard, we quit. When we don't get the yes, we fold. When it doesn't go the way that we pray for it to go, just like Mary and Martha, we begin to question, is any of this Christian stuff even worth it? Because we don't know how to handle and we've not been taught that God wants to trust you with disappointment. And it's married to his timing. Ask the disciples how they felt for those three days. Ask Joseph how he felt for all of those years. You don't think that God allows us to experience disappointment because of his divine timing? Pain is inevitable, but misery, that's optional. We all gonna get hurt one day. Pain, that's inevitable. Misery, that's optional. Loved you, so I stayed where I was two more days. Verse 17, I want to see the same. Luke chapter 11, verse 17. It says, on his arrival. Somebody say arrival. arrival. So that's when Jesus saw it was time for him to show up. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus has already been dead already been in the tomb for four days. Don't forget that number four. Somebody say four. four. 
Okay. So he didn't come on the first day. Didn't come on the second day. Not the third day. And in those days, ancient Jews believed after the third day, resurrection was no longer possible. So it's like Jesus is deliberately coming when it's so bad where it seems he can't do nothing. Somebody say four. four. Now, Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem. And when the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother, when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. But Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if, if you had been here, if you would have showed up when I asked you to, if you would have answered my prayer, if you would have gave us the building, let me make it personal. <laughs> I try to put me in the Bible. If, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. See the conditions of my life because you didn't come on the time that I asked for you to? Do you know the pain that we feel in our heart? We know that her sister Mary felt the same way because verse 32 tells us when Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet. I wonder was she so exhausted from pain? She fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. And I'm reading this, and I'm like, okay, I've read this story so many times. You, you know you're going to raise Lazarus from the grave. What you deeply moved for? <laughs> this is how I read my Bible. You knew that this was going to hurt Mary. You knew that this was going to hurt Martha. You knew it was going to hurt. Heartbreak. God's timing. And then I begin to study. I begin to do a little research. You came on the fourth day. Matthew 14 Verse 24, a whole other episode, it says, But the ship was in the midst of the sea, tossed with the waves, so the disciples are in a storm, for the wind was contrary, and in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. So you waited until it got bad. Then you're going to start not running. It's me. If you don't put some step, I'm looking, Daniel chapter 3, verse 24. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. Look, he answered, I see four men loose. Walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Does God have a method of waiting until you are asking God to arrive, but it seems as though he keeps coming at the fourth watch? I begin to keep thinking, he fed 4,000 people with two fish and five, lo five loaves of bread. In fact, God installed timing and seasons in four seasons. Hmm. So maybe four represents when you think I'm too late. He has a pattern of introducing his timing when you say the time is late. Like, this is so good. Now let's look at John chapter 11, verse 4. <laughs> Verse 4, it says, when he heard this, remember this started off the whole sermon. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for the glory of God so that God's son may be glorified through it. Hmm. So in other words, I have to let this hurt your heart. 
But if you trust me, it's going to give me glory. It's going to hurt just for a little while because joy comes in the morning. It's going to hurt for a little while. But can I trust you in the middle? And so I've arrived to this place. You have arrived to spiritual maturity when you view disappointment as God ordering your steps. That's it. You didn't get the building, that's God ordering your steps. The relationship didn't work out, that's God ordering your steps. Maybe next Sunday I have to speak about when you are doing things that's causing for you to break your own heart. Like if God is going to use pain to teach us certain things, at least let it be a lesson because I'm going to get a blessing, not a lesson because I just need a lesson. Does that make sense? I I want us to say this particular confession, and then I want my wife and I to just kind of give you a natural illustration on how God could use pain because it was a part of his perfect timing, okay? Can I get us to say this? Everybody in the sanctuary overflow and watching online, put this in the room in all caps. Father, Father, I trust you. you. Even when it hurts. hurts. Help me to view view. disappointment Disappointment. as you ordering my steps. One more time. Father, Father, I trust you. you. Even when it hurts, hurts. help me to view view. Disappointment disappointment as you ordering my steps. Does anybody agree with that? I know this is not your typical Sunday message. But when I was reading that story, I never noticed heartbreak and God's timing often are synchronized. And if God can't trust us with disappointment, we can limit ourselves of walking into our appointed time. So will you trust him? Even when he allows the pain to sit in your bosom and you prayed against it. Let's work. I know it's real sobering right now, but I I want us to, what we talked about last night, show these charts and we're done. Um, So can you you put up my first point for me? Yes. Carl, can you go ahead and put up? The first point for me, point number one, um, the enemy comes, he can manipulate, comes at the time when either you're most vulnerable in in pain and most successful to cause pain. Mm. So what I mean by that, when um, I was back in college, I was was about to graduate, I was finishing up um, my senior recital, I was like, I am ready for life, right? I'm at this point where I feel like I'm getting my ducks in a row. And that's, the enemy will use that, manipulate that time to cause pain when you're, when you're at like the highest peak. Yeah. So when you're, you know, your business is booming, yeah. when your relationship is doing good, when everything is going good, then the enemy tries to sneak in and cause that pain to throw you off track. Mm-hmm. And so for me, uh, I was at a very good place. I had not been in any relationships in my whole college. I was focused. And then somebody from my past comes, right? Mm. Now, this wasn't a relationship. This was a friend. Mm. <laughs> this, wasn't a, this wasn't a relationship. This was a friend of mine, somebody that I grew up with, somebody that I knew from the time that I was like 10 years old and that I, had con- that I stayed in contact with, um, man of God um, in the church, right? Got to put, you know, that in quotes because, you know... He can come as an angel of light, right? So that's what the, that's what the, that's what the enemy does. So came back to my life, reconnected with me just as a friend. But then at the more that we started talking, the more he wanted to, you know, pursue me. So I was like, this is perfect. Yes, this, this is it. This is it, right? You know, I'm graduating, you know? I'm going to go back to my hometown. I'm going to get married. Like, God, this, this, the timing is perfect. Right? And that's why I said the, the enemy will manipulate that, right? Because um, we were talking on the phone, and just to make a long story short, he kind of just abandoned me, just like disappeared. I'm, I'm not, and I'm not exaggerating. Like, 
just stop calling me. One day, like before ghosting was ghosting, <laughs> right? I got ghosted, right? And I mean, and this is somebody that I knew for years. So I trusted this individual. I mean, we went to, to middle school together, to high school together, talked to all through college. So this is somebody that I easily let my guard down for. That's why you should never let your guard down. You should always be watchful, no matter who it is. And so because I let my guard down um, and didn't truly, truly seek God, I just kind of accepted it. It's like, yes, God, this is it. I know it. I can feel it. And, you know, I felt like all my ducks were in the row, but that ugly duckling just kind of swaddled on in there. Um, and so that's why the enemy can use those moments. And so after that, I did not steward my pain the right way. Hmm. So the next season after that, I stewarded my pain very badly by bad relationship after bad relationship after bad relationship. Yeah. Because... Um, I was so hurt. Like, I was devastated. I was like, why, why would you do this to me? Like, I thought that I was, it's like the, that thought that like, yes, this is finally happening for me. I've been trusting you, God, and I've been focused. And then you're going to let this happen? So it's kind of like the first person that kind of showed interest, I jumped on in that thing. Yeah. Okay? And it was definitely not the will of God. And so it started this spiral of bad relationships. Now, mind you people, I was still going to church. Mm. I never stopped going to church. I was still on the praise team. I was still active um, and still steward. I know, I know y'all. And still uh, going through these bad relationships and being heartbroken time after time after time. Yeah. And so I had gotten to like wits in with this last relationship, y'all. Because this is the one that came right before him. And so the last one broke my heart so bad, I was like, okay, Lord, I'm, I'm just, listen, I can't do this no more, okay? I'm just done. I am done. Y'all been there? Like, I am done, God. Just forget it. I don't want to get married. I'm just going to be single. And I, uh, I remember being so hurt in that season, like crying at work, guys. I can't even teach. Hold, hold on. You, I'm serious. You, you missed a very critical part. What I miss? Um, a year before this. Oh, no, you were supposed to say that part. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> not my part, that's your part. A year before this, um, my cousin had died. And I went to Oklahoma for the funeral and I saw Tanisha with this dude. I didn't know him at all. It, it's amazing now speaking about it because it's like we were meant to be, but not at that time. We were in whole, living in whole different states. I was in a whole different state. We were meant to be, but just not at that time. We are at a funeral, mm -hmm. and I'm noticing, man, that woman's pretty. Forgot about it, didn't see her until a whole year later. That, during that whole process, she's getting her heart broke, because it wasn't me, you know. <laughs> but, I'm sorry, go ahead, continue the story. Go ahead. It obviously wasn't you, sweetheart. <laughs> um, so after that one, that one was very, very painful. Like crying at work, I was just devastated. But I was at the point that I'm like, I'm not stewarding this wrong anymore. Mm, that's good. So God, either I'm just going to be single and with you. And I was for real, y'all. And I, I mean, when I tell you that I was pursuing God like I had never in my life, I'm telling you, I lived 30 minutes away from my, my church, and we had 5 a.m. prayer. I was getting up at 4.30 and driving before work because, and there was only like seven people there, but I was one of them yeah. because I was so desperate for God at that point. I'm like, I am yeah. sick of going through this unnecessary pain yeah. that, that started. Now, mind you, this was seven years before. The first one was seven years before I even met my husband. So I'm tired of going through this unnecessary pain. So God, I'm gonna steward this right this time, okay? No more bad relationships, okay? I am pursuing you with my whole heart. I am going to 5 a.m. prayer. I am praying, I am snotting, I am crying out like, Lord, please show me the way. And, and there, were, there were other, and we've told this story before, there were two other men pursuing me 
And I was like, God, I don't want this. You got to show me. And I remember crying out on the altar and our pastor was preaching on clarity. And he, like he said, my, my pastor at the time was his cousin and he was J Flo the rapper. Y'all remember that? He was J Flo and he came, J Flo came to the church. And J Flo, he was flowing, you know, he was spitting bars. And I, uh, I'm, I'm crying out during worship and he's watching me and I'm like, God, give me clarity. Baby. And he's watching me. So my purpose was watching me as I'm praying for clarity. Okay, as I'm praying for God to answer me, as I'm praying, God, show me, God, I don't want to make another bad decision. I am in pain. I'm hurting. I don't want to be heartbroken anymore. God, you know, I, I'm falling deeper in love with you. I want to draw closer to you. And as I was at that state of desperation to God, God was sending my husband. And so you have to, so time is up for mismanaging the pain. That's good. And that's what I'm saying. So I spent seven years going to church, going on mission trips, y'all. I'm going, I'm going, you know, to third world countries and pre preaching the gospel of Jesus and still getting into these bad relationships. Okay. So listen, you can be in church and still do some dysfunctional stuff. Talk. Talk. Okay. So listen, it, you, you have to make the decision to steward and manage that. I didn't manage it right the first time. Yeah. And it took me four bad relationships. Mm. So you think I'd learn the first time. <laughs> I didn't. You, th you thought I'd learn on the second bad relationship. I didn't. Because yeah. I, I, just, I just wanted to feel loved and I just wanted someone to want me and I just wanted to feel accepted and like somebody was fighting for me. Yeah. Yeah. And all the while I had a God that, that, a, a God that died for me. Why are you trying to find some dude that's going to fight for you? Yeah. Find, find, you serve the, trust in the God that died on the cross for you and that loves you more than anything. Yeah. Focus on him. Yeah. And so yeah. once I got to that, that point and um, I met Jerry, mm -hmm. then I was like, all right, listen. <laughs> I'm not about to play with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I had got so... I had gotten so to the point where I'm like, listen, if you ain't, listen, if you're not from God, I don't have time for you. Yeah. This is facts. I, I do not have time. I am incapable of foolishness. Yeah. <laughs> At this point, I was yeah. incapable of foolishness. Yeah. And I told him, okay, listen, I need some time. I need to fast. I need to pray. I need time alone with the Lord because I don't know who sent you. Yeah. <laughs> God or the devil? And he said, well, surely I'm not the devil. And I said, well, the devil would say that. The devil would say that. It's a true story. So go ahead. I need some time away from you. Because I wasn't, at that point, I was done being thirsty. Before thirsty was thirsty, I was done. Okay. And that's the point that we, not just ladies, just in, in, in anything, not just relationships, in whatever that you're doing, get sick of being what the world is. Yeah. That's good. Get sick of being that. Yeah. That's and like good. I said, now my, I was still going to church. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when you are in church, don't just come and be a body in the seat. Yeah. Allow God to truly work in your life, in your yeah. heart, so okay, to, to renew your mind, yeah. okay, to recalibrate your desires yeah. for what he wants, yeah. okay, because you can be, and I've been, I've been going to church since I was a child, but I had to get finally to a place in my personal walk with God mm -hmm. that I said, God, I need less of myself, Come on. and I have to have more of what you want. So good. Yeah. And there has to be the time for that. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think what she's articulating was, I'm no longer going to allow pain to steward pain. Yes. Yes. That makes sense? Yes. Like, I don't, and I don't know what would have happened if before I met you, mm -hmm. I didn't focus on the young adult ministry mm -hmm. and you didn't focus on your healing. Mm -hmm. I don't think we would be together and y'all wouldn't be here. So I, I, I want you to see a natural example 
of how heartbreak led to us colliding with God's timing. If that breakup never would have happened, it was a messy church breakup too. Church breakups are the ugliest. We don't have, that's a whole nother sermon. But church breaks, that church breakup was instrumental. And if you would allowed that pain to cause you to leave, when I came, I never would have saw you. Correct. And I wanted so, to leave the church. Yes. Because it was a church breakup. Yeah. And I was so embarrassed. Yeah. Because he was a church musician. I was one of the lead worshipers. So big old messy, messy nasty breakup. Ooh. And then he marries another girl in the church that was my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I, know. I know and it was a small church so everybody was in our business <laughs> um, but I told Jerry this just a, uh, just a maybe a year ago there was some other just a little tidbit that's why wise counsel is so necessary yeah. I remember these two ladies at our church and they were the, it was a younger church but the, we had these elders and her name was Sister Eddie and she had a sister, uh, and I think her name was Wanda. And I was going through the breakup, and I was talking to Sister Eddie, just shooting the breeze. And I was like, yeah, I'm just trying to do things right, Sister Eddie. I said, you know. And she was like, don't worry, just tr keep trusting God, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, you know, you know, I broke up with brother such and such. And she was like, oh. She said, honey, I could have told you brother such and such wasn't the right one for you. <laughs> <laughs> And then, she, and then she looked at her sister. She was like, huh, Wanda, Wanda, Wanda. <laughs> i never forget it. She was like, she told me she was dating sister such and such. Hey, he, he ain't the right one for her, huh? And she was like, oh, no. <laughs> she said, uh-uh, sister Tanisha, whoever you marry got to be something special. And I will never, ever, ever forget that. Yeah. And literally months later, I met Jerry, and he's yeah. definitely something special. <laughs> So trust, listen, yeah. I'm yeah. telling you, wise counsel is important, which goes to the next point. Go ahead and put the second point up there. <laughs> put the second point up there. <laughs> Obedience, discernment, wise counsel, and prayer will save you some time, y'all. That's so good. Yeah, don't view it like, man, I got to pray for 40, 50. That prayer time will actually save time. Yes. Okay. We want you to get these. Number three, take your time. Take your time. You will never, ever see Jesus in Scripture running. So why are you? Fourth watch of the night. He's not running. He's walking. Okay? So take your time. The time that you are taking to heal, to get your biblical intelligence, is needed for you to collide with your appointed time. All right? And number four, you don't have time. To waste. So you, it may you, sound like a contradiction, right? Take mm -hmm. your time. You don't have time. Yeah. Right? But it's really not. You need to take the time necessary yeah. to heal. Yeah. To mature. Yeah. To grow. Yeah. So to get good. yourself together. Yeah. To get your emotions regulated. To get therapy. Mm -hmm. Take that time to do that. Because if you're like, I'm good, like Jerry said, I'm good, I'm straight like I did, jumped right into something else, not taking the proper time to heal and, and have God to really work on my emotions and show me, hey, you know what? You jumped into that and you didn't seek me at all. You just thought that it was good. You just thought that it made sense, but you really didn't seek me. Yeah. Instead of taking the time necessary to heal and, 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 and have God draw closer to him as he can draw closer to me, I just jumped in the next one. Yeah. And we all do it. You just jump in the next one yeah. because it feels good. Yeah. So take the time necessary to heal, to yeah. mature, to get, to get your whatever it is, to get your finances in order. Don't just get, jump into the next thing. Yeah. Take the time that you need so yeah. you're not repeating this vicious cycle. Yeah, so good. Because you don't have time yeah. to be wasting time on all of this vicious cycles. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I want you to see this chart of the devil's method, God's method, and then I think three points and you're done. This is the devil's method, okay? This is what I saw from just studying this week, okay? So the first thing, the enemy likes for there to be trouble. He doesn't always necessarily cause it because you remember in John 16, verse 33, Jesus says, I have told you these things 
so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. Okay, so it's not always that the enemy is authoring trouble, but he'll try to capitalize on the trouble. So the first thing is there's trouble. And with that trouble, I want you to mismanage the pain of it. How do you mismanage the pain of that? You start taking false escapes, relationships, weed, being lazy, hooker bar, whatever it is. Mismanage your time so that you end up wasting your time. Everybody say the devil's method. The devil's method. Now I want us to see God's method. This is God's method, okay? God's method is there's going to be trouble, there's going to be pain, but trust me. That part. Trust me. I know it hurts that Lazarus died. Trust me. Because once you trust me, you collide with God's timing. So I wanted us to see that, give you these points, and we can go home. Number one, you can't birth anything without pain. Results, six-pack, babies, business, you can't birth anything without pain. The only reason your butt is sitting on a seat right now is because somebody was in pain to get you here. You can't birth anything without pain. Number two, sometimes the heartbreak is for recalibration. I love you so much that I'm not going to allow you to take that route because I have something better for you. Number three, we ain't going to like this. It had to happen. You had to experience that breakup. God saw this moment back in 2005. He saw that now. It had to happen. Judas betraying me, it had to happen. I had to get to the cross. Joseph's brother selling him to slavery, it had to happen. You have to be in position so that you can help them when a famine hits the land. It had to happen. Some of us need to stop. I'm trying to help you stop being mad at exes, boos. We should be sending out thank you letters. Thank you. You helped me have a prayer life. Thank you. Thank you. You helped me get back in church. Thank you. Thank you. You helped me start praying first. Thank you. It had to happen. In that moment, it doesn't feel good. Good Friday never feels good when it's Friday. But it had to happen for us to experience the resurrection. The last point, the fireplace is the meeting place. The fireplace is the meeting place. Didn't we throw three? Why do I see four men in the fiery furnace? If you're not in the fiery furnace, you'll never see the fourth man. So just perhaps your fireplace is a meeting place. It's where God is introducing himself to you in another dimension. And I can tell you personally, there's another level of fire you get once you've been in it. <laughs> this is why the devil can't stand when Christians are on fire. Because it's a prophetic reminder of his end. So God in this moment, help us to trust your timing. And help us to steward pain with wisdom. We understand that you're a good father and you're a loving father. And sometimes we don't know why you've allowed things to happen. And maybe in this life we may not ever know. But God, one thing we do know is that all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord and are called according to his name and, and the purpose that you have for our life. Help us, God, to stop trying to find prescriptions in counterfeits. Help us to trust you with our pain. Because the pain is married to purpose. And just like Mary and Martha were crying because they wanted you to come at a different time, you're such a compassionate God that even though you knew what you were gonna do, you still felt their pain. Which reminds us what the author in Hebrews tells us, we have a high priest who can be touched. Thank you God for being concerned and touched with what bothers us and 
just like I prayed on Thursday night, God, whoever has been using people for pain medication, addiction for pain medication, would you cause for them to come to you because you're the master physician and what you give God is better than anything in this world can ever offer us. We'll trust you, even when it hurts. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Was this good for somebody? Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord for the word of God. Yeah. And um, God wants to use the time that he's given you. God wants you to use the time that he's given you for his, for his purpose. And I have to take this um, point from our senior pastor. It's so awesome how the message is aligned because in the first service she was speaking about timing as well. And um, I took this note, one of her point of emphasis was to protect our time, our purpose and our lives while in time, God gives us an assignment by which we must be occupied. Yeah. So God has an assignment for you. He's got a purpose for your life. Yeah. And he doesn't want you to waste your time. He, he, he has all the time in the world. He created time. He, he functions in and outside of time. But our time here on this earth is limited. Yeah. And he wants you to use that time to pursue the purpose that he's given you. Yeah. Not what you think you should do. Not what you want to do. Yeah. He wants you to use your life for his glory and for his kingdom. So if you're in this sanctuary and you know, I have not been giving my time to the Lord. I've been taking all this time for myself and what I want to do. This is your opportunity to say, God, I need you to redeem my time. And I need to give my life to you. So I want everybody to pray this prayer under the side of my voice. Just bow your heads and say, Father God. God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I need you. I need you. To save me. To save me. To change me. To change me. To wash me. To wash me. Make me more like you. Make me more like you. I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart. And I confess with my mouth. And I confess with my mouth. That you. That you. Died. Died. And raised. And raised. Just for me. Just for me. Teach me how. Teach me how. To love like you. To love like you. Teach me how. Teach me how. To live like you. To live like you. Thank you. Thank you. For allowing me. For allowing me. To surrender to you. To surrender to you. So I can say. So I can say. With confidence. With confidence. That I'm I'm saved. But I'm saved. Come on, clap it up in the sanctuary. Yeah. Come on, say, I'm saved. Lord, Hallelujah. I'm saved. Thank you, God. I thank yeah. you that, I thank God that the angels in heaven rejoice every time somebody yeah. comes out of the kingdom of darkness into yeah. the kingdom of light. Absolutely. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And so if you did pray that prayer for the first time, please text the word Fresh Start to the number behind us on the screen and you'll get a video just explaining the prayer that you prayed whether you're in sanctuary or you're online. Yeah. It's the best decision that you've ever made yeah. and that you will ever make. Yeah. And God can redeem the time that maybe you've wasted. Yeah. It's not too late. It's never, it's not too late. As long as you have breath in your body, yeah. it's not too late. Yeah. And God has a perfect plan for your life and he wants yeah. to use you for his glory.